Hello booktube! This is part 9 of my 2022 library tour. Uh, today I'm moving from my headboard bookcase to my uh, modern and contemporary fiction shell, a uh, bookcase. Um, there'll be three parts to this. Um, so by modern and contemporary fiction, I mean uh, literary fiction, or what you could call literary fiction, um, published from at the beginning of the from the 20th century to the 21st, so from 1900 to the present, is what I'm considering uh, modern and contemporary fiction. Um, by canonical, I mean works before 1900. Um, that have endured, and then classics are obviously the literature of Greece and Rome, of ancient Greece and Rome. So now that that's out of the way, let's get on with the books on this first shelf, which I have um, organized alphabetically. Um, first up is Dark Man's by Nicola Barker. Um, I want to say I either saw this on YouTube or booktube one day somebody talking about it or somebody talking about Nicola Barker and I was intrigued and went surfing on a Libris and saw this and bought it um, it's one of those books I really need to get around to next is uh, The Salt Weed Factor by John Barth um, I first discovered John Barth through his um, novella collection uh, Chimera, which I really enjoyed, and I picked up uh, The Saltweed Factor from Golden's Book Exchange oh, years ago, and I've never gotten around to it. This is a epic novel, historical novel set in 17th century, I want to say Maryland, but I could be wrong. I need to get to this one too. And next is um, Shadow Play by Charles Baxter. Um, I picked this up um, for my America 20 project, uh, reading project I had going or wanted to have going in 2020 where I would pick a 20 American authors and read them. Uh, didn't pan out too well. It was mostly Pillapalooza. Um, and I picked um, Charles Baxter as one of them, uh, one of these 20 American writers on the strength of his uh, entry in the Art of series. I really enjoyed um, his one. I think it's the Art of Subtext, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, so, so I have it. Haven't gotten to it yet. I really should get to it. Next is Lie With Me by Philippe Besson. This is a French novel, um, work of autobiographical fiction, if not autofiction, um, translated by Molly Ringwald, who's a famous actress. Um, and this is the story of a young man um, named Philippe who lives in a very small town in France. Um, who falls in love with uh, another young man and this relationship sort of impacts both of their lives uh, for decades afterwards. It's really good. Um, I read it I think in 2020 and found it really quite moving, uh, particularly the um, scene set in the small town. So those were really good. The more contemporary sections of the book uh, I don't think worked quite as well. But anyway, next is um, Alamo House by Sarah Bird. Uh, again, this was one of the novels I had selected for America 20. Um, this is about a graduate student who's not terribly satisfied with her relationship. And so she moves into a hostel, um, kind of sort of frat house, something. 
uh, for uh, graduate women students at the University of, Aust of Texas at Austin in the 80s. Um, and the women of this um, sorority house, uh, hostel, whatever the heck, apartment complex, whatever the heck it is, come into conflict with um, a frat house n nearby. Um, I've tried this novel a few times, I think twice, and I haven't gotten on with it yet. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have another go at it. I probably will. Um, on in the belief that I might have gotten over whatever the he weird thing I have with fiction might be over. Um, so far this year, I'm two for two. When it was supposed to be no fiction 2022. Anyway, I'll talk about more about that uh, tonight on Weekly Reads. That was The Alamo House. Next is The Soft Machine by William S. Burroughs. This is a weird novel that I've had forever. Um, it's been so long that I don't really recall much of novel, except for it's weird. I think it's about a nomadic young gay man or bisexual man who has a lot of weird adventures and I have this uh, novel with the literary fiction the modern contemporary fiction uh, rather than say the science fiction or fantasy because while this novel is incredibly speculative William S. Burroughs is not a science fiction and fantasy writer there's a, a community aspect to science fiction and fantasy that Obviously, William S. Burroughs isn't a part of, as far as I know. Um, that's why I would probably, if I had any Margaret Atwood, I would have all of Atwood in the modern contemporary fiction section instead of her science fiction novels and with science fiction. Anyway, although there are exceptions to that, and we'll get to that when we get to science fiction and fantasy. And then... It'll be about because, yeah, science fiction and fantasy is going to be insane. Okay, moving on. The next book is The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. Um, this novel made the rounds of British Booktube a few years ago. I think before I started my channel. This was one of the first um, books I picked up from Book Depository. And I can't say much about it. I haven't read it yet. I really need to get around to reading it, which is going to be a common refrain in this section of the library tour. Uh, next up are a number of books by Dennis Cooper. This is a Closer. Um, this is one of the George Miles novels. Um, and I can't remember if I've read this one. Or if I've read Frisk, which I will show you here in a second. Uh, this is Frisk, uh, another one of the George Miles novels. Um, yeah, so I've read one of them. Um, where did I? I'm not entirely sure where I picked up Closer. Um, it might have been in San Francisco, I think. Uh, it's a strong possibility. Uh, Frisk I picked up about Pals when I was in Portland uh, for a uh, conference as an undergraduate student, which was a phenomenal experience. And Pals was, at least at the time, wonderful, so I loved being there. But anyway, so yeah, that was it, Frisk. I'm not entirely sure, again, which one of those I've read, and I really liked. Next is a collection of short stories. This is Wrong. Again, by Dennis Cooper. Um, I've had this for a while. This is the first Dennis Cooper I had. Um, bought it from Barnes & Noble. And I quite, in, I think, if I remember correctly, I quite enjoy it. Enjoyed the collection. It's been a while since I've read it. Um, well overdue for me to read. Next is The Last of the Dennis Coopers. This is The Sluts. This I picked up in San Francisco and read it in San Francisco um, at a, I bought it from, 
I think it's a different light and it's not there anymore. I'm pretty sure it's closed down ages ago. So this novel is about the um, early sort of internet hustler scene. This is about a young man who um, is a hustler, a prostitute, or a male prostitute who services uh, primarily male clients, and about the various men who sort of comment on him in an online forum chat. And I remember quite liking the novel, um, although it has been 15 years since I've read it. And again, overdue for a reread. Next is um, A Home at the End of the World by Michael Cunningham. Um, I originally had um, this novel and another, uh, I think, Flesh and Blood in a two volume or two novel bind up through Purple Triangle Press that I bought from a, a online gay store that sold books and other things. Um, and I read Home at the End of the World, uh, I think the summer before my senior year of college and really enjoyed it. I loved the novel. Also love uh, Cunningham's uh, The Hours which I had and I don't have anymore and I really want. Might be something I need to make a note of sometime this or in February or March to pick up. But anyway, so A Home at the End of the World is about a young gay man and his straight best friend who sort of becomes a foster brother and their relationship particularly is um, the young gay man's best friend and eventually the straight uh, young man's lover and how they kind of form sort of a three-person relationship. It's, I remember enjoying this novel, but again, it has been a decade plus since I read it and will overdue for a reread. Next up is one of those novels that I've been trying to read and have been bailing on. This is Wonderland by Stacey D'Erasmo. Um, I picked this up on the strength of um, Stacey D'Erasmo's The Art of Intimacy, one of the Art of books. Um, this is about a woman who, a um, fading rock star who's on her comeback tour and who is sort of going down memory lane. Um, I've tried this novel twice and haven't quite gone on with it. Although my most recent reading attempt late last year, I did get fairly far in. So Next up is another novel for uh, the American 20 Project. This is The Burn Palace by Stephen Dobbins. I bought this on the strength of a, a poetry collection of Dobbins that I read in 2020. Um, I'm going to say this has something to do with professional wrestling, but I don't know for sure. I need to get around to reading this one. Next is another novel I've had some trouble, uh, struggles with, and this is Burnt Sugar by Evan Midoshi. This was a darling for the Booker Prize in 2020. Yeah. Uh, it's about a young woman who has an incredibly toxic relationship with her mother. Um, I tried this novel two times, three times, and I'm probably going to have another go. I really want to have another go. I really want to read this and complete it and enjoy it. So we'll see it when I get around to it. Um, Next is um, A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. This is a, a collection of short stories as novel or a novel in short stories about the music industry, I'm going to say. Um, haven't read it yet. I just recently bought it and need to get to it. Next up is, or two novels by Brett Easton Ellis. This is Less Than Zero, his first novel. This is about a college student who com uh, comes home uh, to LA and gets into some shit. 
as one is wont to do. Um, I've read, it's been a while since I've read it. Um, I want to describe, um, to, in a way, I think Brett Easton Ellis is a bit of a queer dude bro. So anyway, yeah, I need to have another go at this one. And I also want to have another go at The Rules of Attraction, again by Brett Easton Ellis. Um, this novel is set mostly at the um, college, I think it's Camden, um, where a lot of uh, Ellis's early uh, fiction is set. And yeah. I think I tried to read Worlds of Attraction eons ago and didn't quite have much success. The next two are uh, by William Faulkner. This is As They Like Dying. Um, this novel I picked up for, I think, a Southern Lit class at, when I was in college. And it's about uh, the Bundren family, a basically poor white trash in Yucca Penalfa County whose matriarch dies and her last request was for them to bury her with her family in Jefferson. So the family goes on a epic uh, trek uh, through the county to Jefferson to bury her. And all of the children have their own little quirks and goals and what have you. And it, I really enjoy the novel. It is a fun read. It has been a while since I've read it. Again, well overdue for a reread. Although I have read it twice, I think. And next up is The Sound and the Fury by William Faulkner. Um, I originally read this for, I think, a modern and postmodern novel or modern, modern and postmodern fiction class in college, not the Southern Lit class. Um, and I had it in a Norton Critical Edition. So I picked this one up from the um, book sale alcove of um, the library I go to. So, and this is uh, the novel of the fall of the Compsons, pretty much. Told through um, the voice of uh, three of the, or the Compson boys, Benji, Quentin, and Jason. It was a nasty piece of work. Yeah. Moving on, I have The Foresight Saga by John Galsworthy. Um, this is a early 20th century novel about a wealthy family um, that I came to my attention through the early 2000s um, adaptation from the BBC that would have appeared in the US on Masterpiece Theater. Um, and I read the first book in the series a few years after that and quite liked it and wanted the complete series. And so I picked this up uh, from Golden's a number of years ago and haven't touched it. Really need to correct that. And again, a common refrain in this section. Next is Our Lady of the Flowers by Jean Genet. Uh, this is a French uh, gay novel from, I want to say, the um, 40s or 50s, but I could be wrong. Um, don't really know much about it. I need to read it. Um, picked it up from Hastings a few, like, six, seven years ago. Really need to get around to it. Um, next is My Son's Story by Nadine Gordimer. Um, this is a novel set in the lead up to the end of apartheid. It's about an activist, um, African family who moves into a white neighborhood as part of a political, uh, protest and operation. And it's about the father's uh, how the father has been in prison, the mother's steadfastness, the kids' reactions, and the father's eventual relationship with a white woman who's a part of the um, anti-apartheid movement. Um, picked this up from my local library through the book sale alcove. Um, I, 
I have a weird reading relationship with uh, Nadine Gordimer. Um, I really liked her novel The House Gun that I read in the late, very early aughts. Um, but I kind of struggled with other works by her. My Son's Story, um, Berger's Daughter. Um, so I really need to make a concerted effort to collect her work and really have a another go at all of it, I think. Next up is What Belongs to You by Garth Greenwell. This is basically Garth Greenwell's time in Bulgaria as an English teacher and falling in love with the rough trade. Which is basically the same thing as every other piece of fiction by Garth Greenwell. Um, I've read this twice, or I've had goes at it twice. Um, I really don't like this novel. Um, it's, yeah. I mean, I probably will give it another go before I decide to, if and when I decide to start pruning my collection, which I probably should. Although it will be after 1,000 books, once I'm well north of 1,000 books. Um, but I think I ought to really give this another go before I truly decide to send it on its way, wherever that may be. And then the last two books for this for top shelf are by Jim Grimsley. He is a gay American writer who, um, I don't know if he's still publishing. I know he wrote, like, through the 80s and 90s and very early 2000s. Um, but I don't know if he's um, published anything since 2010. So the first novel by Jim Grimsley I have is Dream Boy. Um, this is the story of uh, two young men in the South during, I want to say it's probably after the 60s, but I'm not sure, who fall in love and end up sort of going through a lot of dark trials and tribulations. Yeah, this is a very weird book. Um, it's... I haven't read it in, it's got to be 20 years. I really need to reread it. Um, and finally, um, Boulevard by Jim Grimsley. Uh, this novel came out in 2002, 2000s, somewhere in the early 2000s. Um, and I picked it up from book people. Um, and it's about a young man who moves to New Orleans and finds a job eventually at a, basically a gay, book, uh, gay adult bookstore. Um, and there are other things going on. Um, I read it, I mean, I bought it shortly after it was released in paperback and hadn't gotten around to it until 2020. And yeah, like there were parts of the novel I quite liked and parts that I didn't quite like, um, but I probably should have another go at this in the not too distant future. So that was uh, the first of the modern and contemporary uh, fiction shells. Um, I'll be back Monday with part two of the shelves, part 11 in the overall library tour. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I'll do this video, like part 11 during the early afternoon when I normally film, or if I should put it shipped back to the evening on Monday, because I also have a, uh, my January book haul, which is going to be insane. I think what I might do is I'll do the library tour at my normal filming time and then just do a later video for the um, book haul, which again is insane. And of course, I will see you later this evening with weekly reads. So until then, BookTube, thank you, have a great afternoon, and stay safe.